Hi, welcome. Welcome to the uh, today's live demo. Folks, welcome to my studio. My name is Matthew Palmer, of course, and we are here live from beautiful, overcast Derbyshire. What more could you want? It's um, just gone half past five. Just got half past five in Derbyshire. And here we are, ready to paint a winter landscape. I've been painting lots of colourful summer stuff over the past four, four months. Did you get that? <laughs> it's a good job it's not live. Let's rewind, shall we? Talk amongst yourselves. There you go. There's a painting for you to enjoy while I sort myself out. Okay, let's start again, shall we? We need a we need a time machine. <laughs> ah, it's 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 been a smooth run over the past few months, hasn't it? Eh? I need a holiday. That's what I need. There we go. Anyway, that's the sketch. <laughs> There's the sketch for today's picture. So at least you can sketch it in. Yeah, you lot stop laughing. Come on, help me out here. There's your sketch. like a rainforest in here at the minute. It is. Normal service will resume very shortly. What could possibly go wrong, hey? There you go. I, I've got no water left. Don't you just love live broadcasting, hey? Pretty good fun it is. At least it was a good start anyway. I need to get some more water back shortly. Right, you'll be pleased to know that the pubs are now open. Right, here we go, we're back in business after kicking the ears on. There's a leak in the ceiling. Welcome to this demo. We're going to paint a winter scene. I've been painting loads of brightly coloured stuff recently. I fancy the change, so I'm going to do something wintry. And I, I do a lot of winter scenes. Um, there's a couple over here, for example foam box there's an alpine scene at the bottom there as well so I do like painting snow it's one of my favorite subjects I will be honest with you 
and over here we have uh, of course the uh, the famous nighttime snow scene from one of my books actually this one so check that out and uh, that's the step-by-step -step guide to watercolors that one okay which is a great book if you've not already got it and today i want to do a bit of a mountainous wintry sort of landscape really that's the plan so i've got it all sketched in uh, it's a large sheet of paper this this sketch you can see here is quite large it's around about a3 in size it's pretty big um i want to pop a little bit of masking fluid on if you've never used masking fluid it's liquid latex this stuff liquid latex there you go this is called blue mask this one which is rather nice there it is you can see it now and it's a liquid latex that lets you protect areas of your picture so i'm going to put some of that on a little bit and um yeah that's the sketch i want to turn that off we'll get rid of the sketch there we go and just want to start off by saying well done to everybody that took part in the uh, virtual workshop on on sunday and i'm trying to find the picture that we did actually i've got it here somewhere it was a dragonfly. There it is. You remember doing this one? This was the dragonfly that we did on uh, Sunday at the virtual workshop. So well done to all those that took part in this. It was amazing to see them on my Facebook page, Matthew Palmer Artist. Head on over, hit like, please. Um, and yes, it was a nice one to do. And of course, these are all the previous workshops. Some of the previous ones. We've got the uh, nice poppy meadow these have all been done just using three colors on the virtual workshops one of the favorites of mine the uh, cherry blossom the street lamp that was a nice one to do and what else have we got flamingos on the beach there you go there's your flamingos on the beach that was a cracker that one that was a cracker and the moonlight in venice these are all previous live workshops sunrise at stonehenge Butterfly. It's been a busy few weeks. Um, 16 weeks we've been doing these. You can see it here. Look, live virtual workshops. If anyone wants to have a go at one of these things, all you need is three colours. You need a red, yellow, and a blue. So actually, we're talking primary colours for these virtual workshops. The next one, of course, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the date of it. It's the 19th of July. These are um, using three colours. So you've got blue, so like natural blue or cobalt blue or ultramarine blue you've got alizarin crimson or natural red or even cadmium red would be fine then you've got a bright yellow so like cadmium yellow lemon yellow oreo and just three colors and three brushes in fact it's the same three brushes i want to use for this picture today pretty much these three get a, get a nice close up here look what we've got here folks is these three three brushes for this picture pretty much we'll use some other ones as we go along we've got a large brush this one's a 20 this one's a 10 and this one's a six these are my kind of go-to brushes, really. Sort of standard issue brushes, if you like. And these are the ones that I want to use, pretty much use them for all my pictures, to be fair. So those two brushes, and like I say, they're the ones that you would use on the workshop. So you don't need a great deal of materials for this, a large, medium, small brush. We do have a handful of spaces left. That's why I'm talking about it. So if anyone's interested in this, the scene we're doing on Sunday is uh, Sherwood Forest, which is very local to me. It's within sort of six or seven miles. Sherwood Forest with silver birch trees and a stream running through. No sketching, just basically paint along with me live on Sunday. If you can't do live at 10 a.m. Sunday, the great thing about these workshops and what makes them very different to anything else that's out there is that you can simply watch them back at any time, okay? You can watch them back. You can join in halfway through. You can skip it back to the beginning. You can watch it back for infinity it's yours to keep so it's only a tenner get yourself booked in the details of course as always are in the description in fact for the people that's in the chat i'm going to pop a um, link in the um chat there you go so if you'd like to have a go at painting along with me on sunday or a little bit later then you can do let's check out the materials then Look at that for a good shot, eh? Professional camera work at its best. That's what you call kicking the easel. <laughs> there you go. You can tell he's done this before. Right. 
Here we go. Let's talk about materials for this picture. We've got masking fluid. We're going to pop that on very shortly. Let's just have a quick look at paints. We spoke about brushes and we're also going to talk a little bit about paints, of course. Various colours for this wintry scene. Um, all based around my natural colours, which are my own design of paint. Basically. So what we've got here, we've got the likes of natural grey, natural grey, we've got natural violet. If you've not got these colours, you can mix these from primary colours anyway. Natural violet, natural grey, natural brown or dark skin tone. They both work really well. Okay, and then we've got some natural green. We need a bit of natural green here. We're going to use some natural orange. Natural orange is going to feature in this. Um, and if I use any other colours, I'll mention them. But these are colours that are straight from the tube. These are squirted from the tube. Now, when it comes to using masking fluid, you're best off using slightly older brushes because it can cause a bit of chaos on your... Um, bristle okay so I've got this holder brush that I'm going to use to pop some fluid on so I'll do that first let's get the camera back into a good position for the painting then shall we the floor's dripping wet today <laughs> it's not even that warm is it me or is the floor moist right let's get close in there we go we're not playing any games anymore folks we're getting straight stuck into this now, just bear in mind this is a demo, okay? So if you're trying to paint along, I'm not going to stop and give you time to catch up. That's what the workshops are all about on the weekends. This one, the 19th of July, the scene of Sherwood Forest. That's what you want to be taking part in. So on here, on the sketch, I want to pop some masking fluid simply on this building because I want to put some snow on the roof. Now, if you think it's a bit weird painting snow in the summer, you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. You can watch it later in the winter if you like. Can't you? I need, I need to paint something different. I've been painting quite a lot of you know bright summery scenes. This will be a colourful picture, I promise, but it's 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 gonna be a snow scene. So if you've never used this stuff before, it's liquid latex and you use a slightly older brush for it. And I'm masking where the snow would be settled on this little cabin. In the uh, on the side of this little hill and that's going to keep that nicely protected I'll pop a little bit of snow at the top there as well that'd be quite nice I don't need to worry too much about that one but that's just going to give me a crisp white edge and pretty much masking off this entire building all the way around you don't need to use masking fluid you can just be a bit careful but as you've seen today I'm not in a very careful mode am I walking into the easel there we go. Now I'm also going to take this line across here as well. You see where that's going? This is a coloured fluid, so it's a little bit easier to work with. And then I want to bring it down here as well. Down this edge. We're creating distance on this picture, folks. So we're going to mask it all down. It smells like cat weed masking fluid. It's got ammonia in it. Mask off the chimney. And we're all set. That's all I need to do for that, that's fine. So look, that's how masking fluid dries. Like that. Did I let go of it? and it kind of just turns into rubbish. The same stuff they use for fake skin. Halloween pound shop. That kind of stuff, yeah? Marvellous. Now, that'll take a few minutes for that to dry. While it's drying, I'll just get myself sorted with some paint, shall I? So let's have a look back down here again. So. Now I've come down to planet Earth. I've got some dark skin tone. I do like those colours, the skin tones. They're opaque colours which really fit in nice. So we're going to have some dark skin. Um, natural grey is 
the colour that's made for shadows is blue, red, yellow basically. Natural violets are, are just an essential winter landscape colour. I'll chuck some of that in there. These palettes are back in stock by the way, so if you do want to get hold of any of the materials, if they're in stock, head on over to here. Watercolour TV. Can't go wrong, can you? Some of the colours I've already got in the palette ready, um, like we've got some natural orange here, we've got some natural brown there. Natural green, this is the darker green, that's a useful colour as well, so I want to chuck some of that in there. Bugger the expense, let's chuck it in there. What could possibly go wrong, okay? So, I think I've got enough colours to get, get started, if you're pleased to know. Put those to one side. So they're called natural colours because they're kind of designed to replicate nature. That's the gist. That's the idea behind them, really. So I think the masking fluid is probably dry enough to start working and I want to paint a sky. Now I don't know how this, what kind of sky this is going to be at this particular stage. What I am going to do though is I'm going to use um, some masking tape to mask off the profile of these mountains. Now I could use fluid, but that's a lot of fluid to go on and to wait for it to dry. So I'm just going to mask off the tops of these things. Like I say, there's no issue in using masking, uh, masking fluid for this, really. So I'm just bending this brown craft tape. Don't get this mixed up with... Um, ...framers tape, because it's not. Framers tape's too strong, it'll rip your paper and leave a residue behind where this is actually designed for this job, okay? Now, I'm being a bit careful there. I don't really want to get that near the masking fluid, so I'm just being a bit cautious around that chimney there, there we go. So that'll give me a protection from the sky. This is optional, of course it is. You could use fluid, but you know, I forgot. So I'm using this instead. I've been busy painting animals all day. Not literally, pictures of animals, obviously, for a new book I'm working on. Just thought I'd get that out there which will be out in the spring next year, February, March time, you'll, you'll see it. Right, here we go. It's about bloody time. Right, so we've got the 20 big brush in the water. Where's your light coming from? Are you gonna wet it? I wanna wet it first and put the water on first. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? No idea. There's a big spotlight up there, a big studio light coming down. We could say that's the light, I suppose. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Somewhere. I've not been drinking today, apart from water. That's all. I'm a professional, no, no. I've got a certificate to prove it. So we'll get the water on. Cotton paper, folks, makes a big difference. 140 pounds in weight, not in price, and it's a not surface, which means it's a medium kind of surface. I want to go for some drama here, folks. Now, as far as colours, don't really know what colours until I start painting. Let's have a gander at the palette. Um, I want to put some red in it. Why not? Let's have some red. This one is natural red, which is like crimson, like a lizard and crimson. And that's going to go in a bit of warmth, a bit of colour and get plenty of this around the masking tape of course because that's important. So that's natural red or it could be alizarin crimson. So we'll work that in. Nice rich strong pinks coming down from this corner. Where's your la- no sorry I'll stop I'll not say that again I promise. I'll get that in. Is anybody from Nottingham area who's watching this? Anyone from Nottingham in the UK? Let me know in the chat. If you are, 
on Saturday at 11 a.m. I'm doing an interview on the radio, BBC Radio Nottingham, all about painting and getting people active and well, not active, but active with a paintbrush and stuff like that during the Corona chaos. More colours, more colours. Let's take a look at the palette. Um, I'm going to use some light. Uh, no, I'll take one of these. I'm going to use orange. Yeah, natural orange. That's a nice colour. I like natural orange. Let's pop some of that in there. I'm going to bring that in. And that mixes lovely with the red. So you get that kind of terracotta. Again, you get plenty of colour surrounding the... Um, surrounding those mountains. Get a good coverage into that, that tape. It's going to cause a little bit of lift out. It's going to sleep down the back. That's fine. The next colour is violet, which is a lot stronger, actually, than the other two. So quite a rich violet there, look. In this corner. I'll bring that across. Notice the sort of cross brush stroke as I do this. And that's going to come right in. It's going to just mix in beautifully with the, um, the pink and the orange. That's a colourful scene for a winter, isn't it? Loving them colours. Like that. And then we'll get plenty of colour coming up from the back of this tape. Because that's the reason we want to keep it white for the snow, the distant snow. So I'll get some of that in there, get plenty of it. And then we're going to pop some grey in with the violet, okay? So I'll take natural grey. Now if you've not got natural grey, um, you can obviously mix greys from primary colours, even brown and blue will give you a grey, not the same as this, but a grey is an essential colour of course for painting. I'm going to bring some more of this colour coming up from these, from these mountains because it's all about contrast, okay? So I'm kind of flicking in this darkness, see these big bold sweeps of grey? Bloody hell! They're quite nice then. And what we're going to do with this? Is we're going to get a little bit of a twist. Some people get the twist, some people struggle to do it. Little twisty clouds, okay? Little twists. Little wiggles. Little twists. It's all about creating a contrast at this particular stage. And that's quite important for giving the impression of um, the light and dark colours kind of working together. Super. And then I'll clean the brush out and I'll squeeze it through my fingers. So it's just damp. There we are. And then what I'll do here is I'm just going to soften some of these away. Because it's an evening, let's get close in. Because it's a bit of an evening sky, I'm quite happy to wipe away some light. Can you see that light? I always seem to paint evening skies. I love them. There's something about the sunset. It's one of my favourite subjects. Especially on a snow scene, they really do add to it, don't they? So you know, that lovely bit of a wipe. If you don't get that wipe, because your paint's too dry, um, you could use a like a square lift-out brush. Again, which we also have, surprisingly, on online. So you can get hold of them. Let's give this some blend in here. So I can sort of drag the paint in, so it's sort of softening in a little bit into the picture. It's a lovely way of working. There we go. Liking that. That's got some, it's got some drama to it. Which is good. Now, I'll take the tape away carefully. I want to make sure I don't take too much masking fluid off there. That's it. Um, so I'm going to take the tape away. Now, there's always going to be a few little bits where it creeps through like this, okay? That's where the skiers went for a piece. I'll take those off. Very steady. That works. And that's giving me that nice contrast. Now, what I'll do now is I'll take a lift-out brush, square brush, Got one here, and I'll wash away all them blobs that I don't particularly want. I'll turn them into shadows. 
just kind of wash them into the picture. There we go. Super. Okay. Now, while that's drying off, what I want to do is I want to paint in this sort of distant kind of reservoir. At the back of my mind, I'm kind of thinking of places like sort of Glossop area. Um, as you drive from Chesterfield in Derbyshire towards Manchester, there's a beautiful route you can go through and it goes over these gorgeous moors and everything. And there's this wonderful view looking over a valley like this and this beautiful reservoir at the base. And that's what I'm kind of thinking here. So, so at the back of this picture, We've got a reservoir, we've got a size 10 brush using similar colours, similar colours. Just want to mention folks, if anybody is interested in this workshop here, the virtual workshop, we have had a few people book in while I've been talking. Um, so please have a think about that because they are very nice things to take part in. Um, the one on the 19th is um, the picture of Sherwood Forest in the summer, in the evening, with warm uh, golden light and shadows casting through the trees. There's a stream running through the centre and we also have um, silver birch trees. Got a wonderful technique for showing you how to do those. These are all the previous workshops that have been done over the past few weeks, 15, 16 weeks now actually. Um, right back, you can see the scene of Paris, the bluebells, the beautiful cottage. These have all been done uh, live with people uh, step by step. So if you feel that you want to get into painting, these are a great way of doing it because I'll give you the time to work along with me. I'll stop, give you time to catch up and so on. Really nice things to do, folks. These are all the previous ones. These are also available. These are also available um, to purchase. So any previous workshop, I, if you fancy it, you can get yourself booked in. And Darcy on cue, well done, thank you again. Has just perfectly popped a little um, link in there. So you can take part if you feel that you would like to have a go at any of those. The flamingos, the stone ends, the African safari scene, um, moonlight in Venice, the butterfly, the Italian lakes. They're all there, they're all there. Okay, so, um, and thanks to everyone that's, that's booked on these workshops because I've thoroughly enjoyed them. Every weekend I love doing them, they're great. And each week something different as well. So a great way to uh, to evolve with your painting. I mean, it's 10 a.m. on Sunday, 19th of July, but if you can't um, watch it live because of time differences, whatever, it doesn't matter because you can join in or paint this thing at any time. It's yours to keep, okay? I've got some natural grey here, all right, and I'm pretty much using the same colour as what I've just used in the sky. So we've got the grey, we've got the red, we've got the orange, and of course the violet as well is going to feature in this water. And that's my plan to bring some water into play now, okay? Let's get some orange there. Can't go wrong. So let's get the um, let's get the picture back. Let's get a bit closer in because we can focus around the centre a little bit now. There we are. And I'm starting off with the grey actually. Now, you don't need all these colours for the workshop. So all you need for the workshop is just three colours, a red, a yellow and a blue. Three brushes and you're ready for action. So let's just bring that across here. Across this line here. Size 10 brush I'm using. Now I pop the fluid on there which makes that nice and easy. I'll bring that right down to there. That's a dark bit of water, isn't it, that? Over here as well. And then we're going to go straight in and bring in some orange, natural orange next. Okay, we're going to bring that in. Little hint of it over this side as well. It'll all come out in wash. Then we'll take some violet. Love the violet. Always a nice colour for this kind of work. Especially the winter scenes really does work nice for that. Over here as well. Contrast, remember, that's the secret for these kind of things. Now I want to be a little bit cautious here when I work down towards this edge because I do want to keep this snowy area nice and crisp. So I'm working along this edge here. And 
and then I'm going to clean the brush out, wipe it through the tissue, and then smooth it in. And there as well. Now, I've not put any red in yet, so we'll get some red in there as well. If they're going for an evening, I always seem to paint evening scenes on here, but I, I do like them. Now, I'm going to sort of squeeze the brush through the fingers at this point. And I want to take that colour and lightly tuck it up into the into the banking, just in a couple of places. Just helps to give an edge, just a little crisp edge to that area. Let's put some white in the water as well. Can't go wrong, can you? Beautiful. Okay. Um, so I want to give that a few seconds to soak in, and while that's soaking in, let's get a few more shadows in. I want to use a big brush now, the twenty brush. I'm going to take violet and it's going to go right up into this corner here. I'll pop a bit of grey in there for good measure. Because I want to create a drop. Yeah? Got some tissue here. Like a swimming pool down here where well, that water fell. So I'm blending this away. Gorgeous paper to blend on. Look at that. So it's starting to bring this forward because we're adding contrast and creating depth. That's the secret, yeah? Dark against light, folks. Age old story. Like Star Wars. And other science fiction films. Okay, now let's carry on the same, but this time with a slightly smaller brush, so a 10 brush is what I'm using now. And a similar kind of idea using the, uh, the violet across here now. Building up the shadows nice and steady. Now at this point, I can spend a decent amount of time working next to that building, of course. Down here, paper's dry pretty much. Let's just let's just whiz over that edge, make sure it's all fresh with the violet. Can't go wrong. Make sure that's all in. Clean brush, a few taps, and then we'll take water. In fact, I, I find it easier blending with a bigger brush, to be fair, so I want to use that 20 brush. Blend it towards the background. It's the blending that makes it. Not everybody can do blending. It's one of those techniques to practice, but it's... Uh, we do have blending brushes back in stock. If anyone's been waiting for blending brushes, head on over here. We've got a small amount of stock of blending, blending blades. Finally, been waiting forever for this stock to come through because of the COVID-19 and uh, stock's coming through quite nicely now. So, sign is getting, things are getting back to a little bit of normality, hopefully. There we go. So I'm making sure that's blending. And again, it's creating depth. We're sort of separating those important areas at this stage. That's what we're doing, separating those important bits, okay? Now down here, we're gonna do a similar thing. Take the gray and the violet, and we're gonna go down here. The violet especially, because that just really works nice. Put some down here as well. Clean brush on the tissue. Like watching paint dry this, isn't it? Nice bit of softening going off. There we go. So that's uh, creating a nice effect of, of depth. 
Beautiful. Now, right in this corner over here, we're going to get a nice big chunk of violet in. Um, if you've not got natural violet, you could use dioxine violet, which is a little bit darker than this, but it's okay, it works. Uh, you've also got um, intense violet, ultramarine violet, or you can mix one from red and blue. It won't quite be as strong as this, but that's okay, it works. So primary colours would be fine, like I keep saying. It doesn't have to be fancy colours, you know, you can just use three. And that's what the workshops are all about, folks, on a weekend. There we go. Now, if I get a little bit closer into that area, I mean, we've created structure and shape. What I've got here is a slightly smaller brush. It's a six brush, actually. And I've, I've sketched in a bit of a footpath here, so I'm just going to bring that in. A bit of a road coming from the uh, building. And while it's a bit damp, I'll pop that in. Let the paint spread a bit, you see. Make sure that disappears to nothing. And then on the other side as well, just bring a little bit of a sort of the opposite side, if you like, of that path coming in, smooth it into the picture. Now in a second, I'm gonna give that a really good dry. It needs a good blast with the dryer. At that point. Because that's got my basic scene in place. If I zoom back, you can see it's all there, that. So I'm gonna give that a good blast with the dryer. While that's drying off, you can be entertained by looking at a uh, winter, no, there you go, a phone box in the snow with, if you look close, you can see some phone numbers in there. It says, ring this number for a good time. See it? I want to give this a blast. Bored with that, folks. We'll swing over here, and we've got a beautiful stag in the wood there. Look at that. There we go, folks, we're nice and dry. We're nice and dry. That's the main bit gone in then, that's ready for detail, which is the best bit. So let's have a look at it in a minute. Hopefully that's looking nice. We can see we've got all this separation. We're gonna add more shadows because a winter scene is all about adding the shadows. Size 10 brush again. Um, and I'm gonna be using greys. We're gonna be using greys for this. Um, so I wanna take natural grey here and mix some violet with it so we're just going to be adding a few extra shadows at this point okay again very important thing to do on a on a painting create that nice kind of block sort of separation effect in these mountains so especially here because that's the lowest part so i want to pop that in clean brush from the tissue and then we're going to smooth it all in and then I want to use that colour, if I get close into these background hills, 
I'm going to use that same colour for creating separation in those now, which is going to make quite a difference. So I want to work up the side here of this one. Let's get closer into that, actually, folks. There we go. So this is grey, natural grey with um, violet. I'll bring it down like so. Clean brush, wipe it dry, and then smooth it into the picture. So it kind of fades in, so it creates that sort of distant effect, which is what it's all about. And then over this side, I want to do a similar thing here as well, so it's going to come down. There we go. In the water, on the tissue. Smooth it in. Makes a difference adding those. Quite important uh, shadows, really. And anywhere else you feel um, that it would work, and there's a few places actually that you could get away with putting one of these in. Like over this side here, you could bring in some darkness. It doesn't matter where your light is, really, doesn't matter. It's, it's not an issue, you know. It's more to do with what works to the painting at this stage. Smoothing it in. Over this side. Bring a few in. I'm going to darken that little bit in that corner as well. And then use the water to smooth it. There we go. Now, what really makes these kind of scenes work is when you start to bring in trees and detail and hedgerows and you know all the f nice sort of distant fields and things, which we're going to bring in very shortly to the picture. We'll get to that stage. But it's just nice having a little fiddle around with shadows at this point. And it's simply just using grey with a bit of violet, that's all I'm using. And anywhere I feel, I could add a little bit of extra contrast. Especially with it being a night scene, an evening scene. Around here as well, look. On this side as well. Like sculpture, you're kind of sculpturing the painting with shadows and things like that. Bring that down. There we go. Super. A few more shadows up here. Even in these, these hills, I'll put some shadows on one side so you can see it's creating like a lip or an edge to these areas. Whatever works. Nice. You've got to squint at the picture. You've got to kind of half close your eyes to look at this. And then those shadows start to come alive when you do that. There we go. And then I'm just going to add a couple more of these. Sort of down here. Same colour, violet with a bit of grey. So it creates a bit of shape. So it's sort of sculpturing the landscape, if you like. Um, this road will put some little detail, you know, some sort of skid, I'm going to say skid marks, not skid marks, tyre tracks. 
using the size 10. You know, the sort of footprints in the snow kind of thing. There we go. So a few little, little interesting little, little bits and bobs hanging around. We've got masking fluid to think about in a second, but just before we take that off, let's look at the water for a second, folks. I'm, I want to put the camera to one side because I keep walking in the way, don't I? So it's going to be a little bit on an angle, but at least it won't be quite as much as in the way. Let's take a look at the water there then. Let's get closer to that area. Um, six brush, strong grey, very strong grey. Um, and I want to work along the edge of the water here. Put in horizontal lines. Try not to go over this area if I can. Keep these lines nice and straight. Now on the camera, they might not look quite so straight because um, I've moved it to one side. Should be alright now, I think. See that slightly dry brush effect really starting to beef up the contrast at this point over this side. So we've got plenty of darkness next to that building. Love it. Over here as well. Can't go wrong, can you? It's going to make a focal point out of that. Mecca. Mecca. That bingo place. Mecca. Mecca focal point out of it. Beautiful. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so that's really good. And that makes quite a difference. Now I'm getting ready for starting to put in some um, fields, hedgerows, that kind of thing. So I'm going to give that another quick blast with a dryer. Uh, this time you can be amused by some animal portraits, which are just sort of hiding at the back. There's a squirrel, penguins, and of course the uh, kingfisher. There you go. And a pinball machine. <laughs> So let's, let's look at the uh, look at the squirrel. There he is, the handsome beast. Thanks for the people that have been booking the workshops I've been talking. We've had quite a few people book, so thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and like I said, it's on the 19th of July, this one here. It's the Sherwood Forest in watercolours. That's the scene. That's looking nice, this scene. You can, it's starting to get a bit of structure now. It's ready for some detail. I want to take off all the masking fluid at this point. You can just use your finger for this, or you can use like a rubber or something. I'm just, going to just rub it out. So I'll take the fluid off completely. There we go, that leaves us a nice clean building which we're gonna pump with colour, get to that of course. If you've got any hard lines where the fluid was, where, you, where the blending happened, you know, it's no harm in just picking up a little bit of pale violet and just kind of making sure it's not too obvious that you've just gone around the edge with fluid. That'll just help soften it in a bit. But I'm liking the distance we're creating on this one that's what i wanted to capture so hopefully that's uh, that's that's the case hopefully and let's take a look at what we've got then lovely so i'm going to work from the back forward now we're going to put hedgerows in and for this I'm going to use one of my tree and texture brushes. There's different size brushes. This is the smallest one. I'm going to use this small tree and texture brush, okay? I'm going to use that with a straight edge. I've got a scrap piece of paper here. I'm going to use this for creating some fields and some separations and put some shadows in. 
okay? So if we take a quick gander at the palette, There's a question come through saying, what do I do with the demo pictures? Well, quite a lot of them I've been giving away on the, uh, I'm doing a prize, a prize giving for the, uh, the workshops. So I'm giving some away. I do give some to charity. I keep some for myself, surprisingly. We are planning to do an online um, charity auction very soon, um, probably towards the end of the summer. So, We'll be using some of the paintings there to raise some funds for charities. We've got some grey, we've got some brown mixed together. Natural brown, natural grey. If you've not got those colours, just mix blue and brown and you'll get something similar. It's like a dark colour, can you see it? See that sort of dark sort of grey colour? I've got a piece of card here. A piece of, it's the one we were sketching in the dragonfly from the other day, actually. There we go. So... Let's get close in. I like to zoom in close. I know you can't see the whole scene, but for me, I think it's worth it because you get to see the detail. And we're going to create some distance, basically, with a piece of card and a small tree brush, which is a stippling brush. Think hedgerows, yeah? Think hedgerows. And these can basically be anywhere I wish. Now, if you've not got a stippling brush, you could just use a, you know, just a, a, a brush that you sort of break the hairs on a little bit, if you know what I mean. It's not very good for the brush, but you can do it. There we go, and then over here as well. Nice to see these because it's going to give it's going to give separation. I'm going to bring something up that side as well, actually, just at the side of the cottage there, a little bit of a distant hedgerow or something. So I'm actually stippling the brush at this point, and I can I can alter the angle of some of these as well, so I can start to make them look a little bit more like. Hedgerows that are following the side of the hills. So I am very much working from the mind uh, imagination, which I do a lot, to be fair. There you go. You can see the sort of hedgerows shooting off at the distance, these angles. It will make a big difference, this. It's also just bloody good fun to do it, to be fair. It's a nice, a nice thing to do, this. It's quite addictive. And I can take as much time as I like on this. It's not as though there's anybody watching me, eh? There you go. Works. Keep rotating the card, different angles. It's like you it's like the Yorkshire Dales all over again. Like it. So basically it's grey and brown. Or if you've not got grey and brown, you could use blue and uh, something like burnt umber, burnt sienna would give you a similar colour. Watch out for it going down the back of the card as well. That can be a bit of a problem. There we go, and then we're going to shoot off down here. If you look close, you can see a sheep on there with its head stuck in the railings. There's a joke there, but I'm not going to tell it you because it's not past the watershed, at least not in the UK. There we go. I like to see these happen. They really do make quite a difference. And then one more over here. There we go. So we're creating this nice, distant, crisp sort of landscape. And it does make a big difference to the picture. 
really does. Now anywhere that we feel um, you could get away with doing little sort of bushes and things in this picture. So I'm going to pop some little, little sort of stipples sort of down by the water there. Let's get a little bit closer in so you can see. Because the sky's in, it's done its job and it's now working on the, the landscape as it were. And I think it's important to uh, take your time with this one. So obviously because I'm much closer here, we can paint the larger area. We have a gap there for a gate. We're just kind of making this up as we go along, really. That's the that's the fun of it. This is for me. Just a little bit of a hedge over this side. It's all adding to the scene down here. Mixing a bit more colour. So I can be a little bit more careful with the stipples down here. So I'm being a bit more gentle with how I put the brush on in this corner. So imagine, you know, like some old, you know, some sort of dead foliage, that kind of thing. I'll put some branches in that, that'd be quite nice a bit later. I could even put some white paint in to get the snow if you wanted to go down that road. There we go. Quite effective in that corner. So it's just a nice way to well, you can see the distance she's creating, can't you? Hopefully. Nice. I'm just going to put a little bit more over there. Super. Now, if I get myself uh, really close in to the edge of the water for the minute. Same brush, but I've made the colour more grey. I'll pop that right on the edge and sort of stipple the brush along the edge of the water. Puts like a banking on. Can, can you see that little bit of like an earthy sort of broken kind of banking effect? It doesn't want a huge amount of that. Just a little little hint. A sliver. There we go. Well, that's nice. It's nice to see that. And that brush as well is quite useful if I dry it off on the tissue. And if I just pull, pull it down a bit, you can make reflections with it as well. Add a bit of a drop to the water. That makes sense. Lovely. I like how that, that kind of shapes up. Let's zoom back and look at it now. And see it shaping up, can't we? Definitely a landscape, 100%. Um, so I'm just going to pick up the 6 brush now. Size 6 brush. Very dry. And when I say dry, I mean that's the piece of tissue that I'm using. Um, it's done its duty today, if I'm honest. I'm going to use this dry brush effect. The texture of the paper is coming into play. And I'm working around the edge of the footpath. So it's like that bit of earth and dirt, you know? It's kind of... When you have the snow down for a while, you see all the... All the murky stuff, don't you, you know? Oh, 
all the rust stuff comes through, don't it? There we go, so just Now, if you want to make that look as though it's a bit frozen, the footpath, it's a similar thing to what you did for the um, for the water, and it's just popping some sort of downward lines on. But I'm using a six brush at this point. Now, again, folks, if you are doing the virtual workshops, just bear in mind that it's not like this. This is a demo. This is me painting, um, you know, pretty quickly, as well as rattling on. Um, whereas the, the live workshops are very much I'll do a bit, stop and let you do a bit so I'll give you time to create you know, the scene yourself as it were I like the way that's created a nice, interesting foreground area. I'm going to paint a gateway in. That'll give some interest over here. As always, if you look close on the top of there, you can see a bird, a bearded chuff, of course. Yeah, if you've never seen a bearded chuff, well, there's one right there for you. Popping some little bits of foreground in. bits of interest it all helps you know all helps to create distance which is what I'm after doing right from the beginning on this thing you know creating depth distance and that nice look at that beautiful it's working well isn't it how's it looking folks while I have a drink of Uxton water nice it's nice just to you know these live demos I mean it's interesting because these are free demos you know and you sort of do these things because I enjoy them you know I don't do them um, for any other reason really I do them because I like teaching I like painting and this is a way that I can I can teach painting you know like this because this is what I do um, and it's nice to be able to get people from around the world to see these things as well, which is great. Now, if I dilute the colour, the brownie grey colour, I'm just going to ease out a little bit from what I've just done. I'm going to paint in some.
depth. Just a few extra very distant fields which can just gradually sort of melt in to the landscape. Almost just become part of the part of the land there, look and see. The little spots, if you look close on them. Them little dots that I'm just placing in. Are really giving that little impression of sort of trees and things, yeah? It's amazing how a a spot in context can add something to a picture. And if you can paint a picture with distance in it, then you've captured a nice effect. Okay? You've created some interest in your painting. So hopefully you can sort of travel, travel through those hills. There you go. So if we, if we zoom back from that area now and take a look how those distant fields really do fly back compared to what we've just painted in down here in this corner, these this, that tall foliage in the footpath. Look how we've created depth in the landscape. Now if you were doing a, a summer scene then obviously you'd lay down a wash of greens and things and then you'd add the shadows with the greys and the violets over the top. You can do that, of course you can, that works just as well. It is a bit Yorkshire Dales to be fair. It's a bit Yorkshire, Derbyshire Dales kind of thing going off here, I think, if I'm honest. I, mean, I had no idea when I started painting. In fact, I didn't know what I was going to paint until about half an hour before the actual demo. Which is part of the fun for me, I'll be honest with you. That is, is part of the fun on these things. For me, anyway. I'll say that to you now. I don't always plan. I do lots of live TV shows. Uh, in fact, there's some coming up next week, next Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and they're great fun because I don't know what I want to do until until we go live. And that is genuinely part of the fun for me. The pressure. I love the pressure of those. They're great. Let's pop a little bit of a footpath coming through here. So we just had a little bit of an open area. Now I want to take a look at the um, um, building now. I think there's enough, probably enough detail for the minute. Um, and I want to paint in the building. Yeah, paint the building in the next. So let's get close to that then. See what we've got over here. So, um, probably a nice kind of stone sort of building would work well. And for that, um, if we look at the palette again, there's a colour, part of the natural range, called natural yellow which is a sandstone colour. It was one of the original ones I designed about 12 years ago. It's called Natural Yellow. And it's not the bright yellow. It's like a dark, sort of raw sienna kind of colour. 
But it's nice for sandstone to be honest. I want to use that. Let's just pop it over here somewhere. I want to use some of that. I'm also going to have some dark skin tone as well. I'm going to throw some of that in. Again, if you've not got these colours, you can sort of make variations on themes, can't you? You know? There we go. And then grey, of course. There's grey over here. So those three colours will work nice for this. For the building. Uh, let's go for it then. Let's paint this thing in. So we're going to pop in a... Uh, there's a nice window here. Straight into the skin tone, I think, there. I'm just going to vary the tone of colour that goes into this. Lock it in. Like a little shack, into it, you know, that kind of thing. So that's just me alternating between skin tone and yellow. I'll pop shadows in, of course. There we go. Now if I revisit it briefly, look, it just gives texture. It's drying quickly, it's really warm today. It's 20, 23 degrees, which for here is warm. Now if you look at the side of the chimney, famous to this particular part of the world is the famous phantom phallus. Can you see it just there look? The famous phallic symbol of Matthew's noggin landscapey watercolour thing. It's obviously a folly. But you knew that didn't you? You know where it is, don't you? Like I said, it's where the skiers went for a piece, remember? Now, I want to add some shadows to this. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Is it coming, where, where's it coming from? I'm going to bring it in this way, I think. It's going to go that way. It's going to go this way. Get it? This is natural grey. And down the side. Clean brush. Move those shadows into your picture. Down here. Nice. So if you look back at that, we've got the basic building. Um, it needs some detail. So my first thing to do would be to get some violet, natural violet, and pop a shadow from the chimney and just a little bit of darkness in so it's not quite as, you know, white as it were. And then just going to smooth that in. So it's not as obvious. That's better. It kind of calms it down. I'm gonna put the windows in some 
final detail. And the violet can also be used for the shadows in the background as well. Maybe in some of the fields, we'll put some uh, put some beautiful cast shadows because now we know where where's your light coming from. I'm. I remember years ago I did this demonstration. I'll not I'll not say where it is because a big part of my job is going out, travelling and visiting groups and doing, you know, demos. Or it was until this craziness began. And um there's always a couple of uh, fellas in art group who'll ask that question, where's your light coming from? And there were these two particular chaps, I'm not gonna say where it was. And um they kept saying this, yeah, but where's your light coming from? Did they wet it? And um, it was a snow scene, and there was a little church about this big, you're talking probably half an inch, a little English church at the background. And intentionally, I put the shadow on the wrong side and aspire to wind them up. And these two fellas at the end came up and said, beautiful picture, but you've put the shadow on the wrong side of the church. And if, if you've ever seen Mrs. Brown's Boys, it was a case of, that's nice. Let's come back down to the building here. Pop some little extra shadows into the landscape here. Yeah, you can sort of mould it. And sort of take it up and then move it around the shape of the the snow, it's just using violet, pale violet, and it's a way of creating a little bit of interest. Pop a little bit more on the, the roof of the little, whatever it is, building. Put down there as well, it just helps it look a little bit more realistic. Hopefully you can see that on, on your screens. A little bit of shadow on the, on the footpath. Every little helps. Nice. Now it's, um, I'll finish the building off in a sec, but in the foreground, in the foreground, I think it's a nice idea to add a little bit of detail. Now what I mean by detail is like, little bits of grasses now it's, it sounds strange but I want to show you something a little bit different here a nice little nice little technique here for doing some shadows so I've pretty much used the six brush throughout um, for a big chunk of this picture but I'm actually going to pick up a uh, if I can find one a uh, branch and detail brush which is the pointy brush or just a rigger brush or something like that just want to mention with just got a few spaces left on this workshop folks so if anyone is interested in booking this workshop um have a think about it please because um, it's been nice that people have been booking so thank you for that and if you would like to get some painting done the link is in the description of course for, for booking those and there's lots of people in the chat here that can back me up how enjoyable they hopefully are so you can give it a go so i've got um this branch brush and i'm going to paint in some tall grasses sort of poking out of the snow. And you always get a few of them, don't you? Little right on the edge, them little little tall ones. And I want to put some shadows on them. You'll, you'll see in a second down here as well. This is a really strong color. It's the gray and the brown again, so it's the same kind of color scheme I've been using. Put a few little, little spots and things on. It's just using a, a fine brush, that's all. Putting them on. It's well worth sticking through this and putting these little bits in at the end. Right down on the edge of the, uh, on the edge of the footpath and even in the building as well, while I've got this rich colour on this, this fine brush, I can start to bring in little bits of little bits of detail.
so to inside D. Inside the little corner of the little chapel or whatever it is. And uh, obviously put the windows in in a minute as well. Pop a little bit of a windowsill or something on. Even just little bits of spots around the front here to represent something or nothing, you know? Some little bits of foliage and various things hanging around. It helps to sit it down. Now, the grasses that I've just painted on, it's a nice idea to paint in some shadows for them. I want to do in a second or two. So we're painting. Are people still with me? Yes, you're still with me, aren't you? Good man. Good on you. Thank you. Right. Let's just get some like an old sort of rustic gateway at the side. These little bits are going to make this thing, okay? Just give that a little bit of interest. Just little bits of random nonsense, basically. Everybody's garden's got little bits of random nonsense around, I imagine. Speak for yourselves. Chimney pots. Get a bit of water on these, some of these bits, and just soften them in a bit. And then if I take some grey, pop some nice dark windows in, of course. Like dominoes. Big chimney, that in it. A little bit of stonework as well, would be nice. Little, little flakes. a bit of interest. There's a few darker stones on the chimneys because obviously that's the bit that sees the most most weathering and various other things. Lovely. Now, yeah, sorry, because I was I was talking about these um, grasses. So if you want to make the grass look as though they really do stand up in the foreground, if you get yourself some uh, some violet, natural violet nice and pale and make sure it's not too strong and then if we pop in yeah but where's your light coming from your lights coming in this way and you're gonna pop in some shadows cast from the tall grasses and weirdly I think it really stands them up don't it same over here look especially in the foreground of the painting really does make quite a a difference I think to them 
Do you know what I mean? It just gives them a lift, don't it? So you can see that three-dimensional sort of wintry effect. Lovely. While I'm close in with the camera there, folks, I'm going to grab a craft knife. Brace yourselves. You can smell the fear. We've got a craft knife here and have a good old scratch in that water. Let's put some reflections of the white. Put some white in it. It suits the snow scene. This is basically cutting it with a craft knife. You often get a few icicles dangling, don't you? Can, you, can we get an icicle out of this yet? Yeah, see the icicle? There's an icicle. Don't make them too big. I've seen people do them before and they end up looking not like an icicle but more like something that dangles between the horse's leg. So it's me a little bit cautious. What's he been on today, this fella, hey? There we go, it's quite nice. And then even on the footpath, put little bits of, make it look frosty. Good old scratch down here as well. Beautiful. Look at that sound, hey? Makes a lovely sound. <laughs> Look at that sound. That's like a scene from Ghostbusters. Listen, smell something. Over here, where you've got this dark foliage, I suppose it's a nice idea to dig and flick some little bits of light foliage. There's lots of dark colours around. So we can dig and flick, get close in, can you see? So I'm literally digging it in. It doesn't go through to the other side because the paper's too thick. You know what I mean, don't you? I think that's quite effective. It like puts a bit of sort of gentle snow settled on it. And anywhere that you feel in your picture, you can have a bit of a scratch around. With some of those colors, some of that knife, some of that, some of that white. But especially it works nice in the water, don't it? See what I mean? Really effective in the water. Great. Now I'm going to lift this thing straight and we'll take a look at it with the tape off, folks, okay? So I want to get a nice kind of finished shot of this thing because I think it's finished. But I want to show you the scene with the tape off. It does make quite a difference having the masking tape uh, sort of removed from it. Let's get this thing nice and level if we can. It's always hard to get this thing level. That crisp edge makes a nice winter landscape. And hopefully you enjoyed watching it, folks. It was an interesting beginning, my tripping over the easel, but there you go. That's Mr. Farmer's winter landscape, folks. Don't forget, if you're interested in the uh, virtual workshop, we do have literally a handful of spaces left. Spaces have almost gone. And yes, we do have a limit on how many people uh, take part in them. Let's have a nice close-up look at this watercolour. Let's get nice and close in. So you can see all that gorgeous detail on the cottage there. The old gateway, the icicles. Um, and then we'll sort of zoom back. You can really travel back in that watercolour, folks. So it just goes to show that a winter scene doesn't have to be drab, grey and white. I mean, I've used reds, oranges, violets throughout that picture. And it's made a wonderful wintry landscape. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a pleasure to paint as always. It was. I love the craft knife effect that happened down here. That was really nice. The light in the water. The shadow in the grasses. The distant fields. And the underlit cloud. There we go, so that's, uh, that's Mr. Palmer.
I'll see you next time for more watercolour. Loads of stuff to keep in tune with folks. Of course, the workshop here. Still got a few, well, literally a few spaces left. Watercolour TV is a great place to get involved with me. Uh, Matthew Palmer Artist, that's my Facebook page, Matthew Palmer Artist. Head over there, loads of stuff on there. Everything I do appears on my Facebook page, so please do hit like. And um, if you wish, that is, of course. And I will see you, uh, most of you, I'll see you on Sunday for the virtual workshop. That's the Sherwood Forest with Silver Birch Trees. So thanks for watching, thanks for sticking around, and I hope you're keeping well, and I'll see you soon.